Okay, here we go. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. So I'm sure you're all aware by now as video creators that in 2019, YouTube is changing in a huge fundamental way. The way you manage your videos and analyze data is transitioning from the classic studio that's been around for a decade to the new studio beta. Now, nobody knows when YouTube are gonna flip the switch. A lot of us are still using the classic studio. Some of us are transitioned onto a new one. Then there's positives and negatives force all about this. But eventually, we're all going to be using that new studio. Right now, YouTube are actively encouraging you to use the new studio by setting your default studio to the new one even if you didn't ask for it and putting all sorts of banners in the classic studio saying that there's brand new features. However, there has been one bottleneck that's been bringing all of us back to the classic studio and that is the upload flow. Yeah, whenever you click that upload button, you're always brought back to something familiar until now. If you go to the new studio and click on the upload button, you may now find a beta upload workflow. As I stand in front of a camera now, I have never clicked on this button, so I have no idea what the experience is like. So I'm gonna share my experience with you. This one's gonna be interesting, let's do this. Okay, let's give this a try. I have never used the new upload flow, so this is completely new to me, a brand new experience for all of us. So let me just preface this by saying that there could be unexpected things that happen, bugs, none of the vidIQ tools will be on this screen as well, I hasten to add. And if this recording is a little unpolished, it's because I'm doing it without much editing. We're just gonna go through it and see what happens. So let's jump in. All right then, let's click on the upload button. And for some video creators now, you will have the option to upload video beta new. I'll do a drum roll at this point to uh, get some tension built up here, uh, but let's just click it. All right, so we get a pop-up in the middle of the screen and YouTube are keen to remind us of the terms of service, community guidelines and that sort of thing. We want to upload a file here and see that screen. What's it going to look like? I have a video ready to upload. So I'm going to select a file and you can briefly see what my file structure looks like here for vidIQ as I go down to my beginner series and I'm going to upload a video about how not to get scammed by dodgy YouTube emails. So as soon as I double click on this uh, file, new things are going to happen. So let's do it now. Okay, so it's staying in the same upload pop-up screen and you saw very quickly a upload process there in the top right. So we're not transitioned to a new screen. This is all through a pop-up. We've got a title, description, uh, monetization. I'm keen for you to turn it on uh, at the top here, as we can see. Nothing about tags, which is interesting. As a first impression, it's telling us that it's a draft, so it's not available to viewers. And the video is still processing at this moment, giving us a file name, but of course, file names do not matter on YouTube. That's a myth, apparently. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to start putting in some metadata and see what happens. All right, then, let's take the title, which I've already done, and drop that into the title and replace what was the file name there. It's given us a character count, I think. Uh, sorry, that's Grammarly. You should ignore that. That's got nothing to do with the upload process. And now it's it's finished processing the video, so it's given me my pre-selected thumbnails that I can choose from, or I can choose one from my uh, custom thumbnails, which I'm going to do now, and I'm going to choose that thumbnail, so that plops in there as usual. I can click those three buttons there and edit it or download the thumbnail, which all seems self-explanatory. And we've also got an escape hatch here, so I can go to the classic studio if I wanted to. The description has the defaults in from your channel default, so already uh, that is what my description would usually look like. So I can now uh, fill that in just down there. Doesn't seem to be a way to expand the box though, which you could do in a classic studio. So I'm a bit limited by not being able to see all of my text. Maybe that's a bug potentially. Uh, but it is showing me the character count there as well. VidIQ doesn't monetize its content, so we're not going to be turning that on. And what is this here? We can copy the URL video. So that's useful if I want to share it on my social media as I'm uploading a video. And so that appears to be step one of three in this upload process. It feels like a wizard 
more than a single page as we're used to in the classic studio. Title, description, thumbnail, monetization in the first page. No tags, so that's significant. YouTube have been telling us that tags are not as important as they used to be and they seem to be supporting that in their new upload process. Okay, let's click next and go to the advanced settings for the video. So this is now showing me things such as playlists. So I do want to add it to a playlist, which is the beginner's guide to... <laughs> used to do in a classic studio is put the playlist in order of when you last added a video. So the more recent playlist would be at the top. This looks to be in, I don't know what sort of order it's in. So. YouTube, it would be helpful if I could search for playlists here to add it to the one I want. Uh, we're not looking at ads today because we do not monetize our content on vidIQ. Language and subtitles. So it looks as if I can upload a subtitle file if I wanted to here. End screens and cars is interesting because those, I guess, are not enabled yet in the new studio. So if I click on that, it does a pop out to the classic studio to do the card. So yet yeah, that's still not fixed um, properly as of yet. Now here we are, tags. Uh, it's allowing me to put in tags in this advanced settings page. Uh, so what we're going to do is delete all of them because I do have some saved and I'm going to pick those up from my uh, tags that I'd already decided to add and then drop them in there. So those are my tags. And so yeah, that. so I understand now that the process is uploading a video, the title and the description and a thumbnail, which YouTube is trying to communicate to us are the most important things. And then the secondary items, such as tags, cars and end screens on this second area. And then also things that have been hidden before really, such as category, video location, additional settings, comments, those sort of things, which you had to click on an advanced tab. YouTube is taking you through that process naturally now on the upload area of the video. And let's now take a whistle stop tour of these other areas. Category, the usual, how do these categories fit into YouTube categories? A legacy of uh, another time on YouTube. I'm not sure why they're there, but if you want to put it in a category, you can do video location. That will replace a hashtag if you decide to use one on a video and you can search for location. And what else have we got here? Recording date, if you wanted to add that. License and rights ownerships. Uh, so you can change it from a standard to Creative Commons, whatever is your preference for that sort of thing. Comments and ratings. This allows you to modify those areas uh, if you want people to comment on your video. And then some additional settings here, which are mostly attached to notifications and embedding the video and that sort of thing. Like I say, none of these areas of the upload process are new but they are in an advanced tab so you very rarely see them so it may just encourage people to tweak their videos a little bit in terms of whether it gives the video more discoverability or a better chance of success these are all very marginal things and often none of us really touch these areas all right then let's imagine at this point that we have gone through the process of fixing our cards, our end screens, adding a video to the playlist. What happens on the next screen of this upload process? Let's find out. So we're into the preview and publish stage and it's suggesting the visibility, unlisted. Interesting, so it's defaulting to unlisted. And that allows you to preview the video uh, for monetization issues. So YouTube knows this is a problem where video creators upload a video and then they have a monetization yellow icon next to a video and that gives them a chance to maybe clean it up. Not really ideal if your content is very time sensitive and to be honest I would still prefer for my video to be defaulted on private and now it's giving me some options schedule as public if I wanted to do that and it's sort of giving me a bit of a checklist here. Do kids appear in this video? Look for overall contents guidance. So it's pushing us to those community guidelines to make sure that your video fits within what YouTube are now enforcing a lot more to prevent the video from hitting monetization issues. And at this point, I guess if I click done, that would end the upload process. If it was public, that would immediately send it live. So uh, we're gonna leave it private, click done and see what happens. Now, 
doing a bit of a loading effort there. Presumably this pop is going to disappear, I guess. The video is only visible to you. It's gone and taken me to the video's manager page, showing me that video right there. And that ends the YouTube new studio upload process. So there you have it folks, both my first look and your first look at the new upload process that's soon to be used by millions of video creators to upload billions of hours of content on YouTube. What are your first impressions? What do I think of it? I've got to be honest, I quite like it. It's intuitive, it guided me through the process and it worked. I've uploaded thousands of videos onto YouTube now so I'm quite familiar with the classic Creator Studio upload screen and this felt like a natural progression and upgrade. I could find everything very quickly and I think for new users of YouTube the step-by-step -step process will help guide them. First of all the most important things, the title, the description, thumbnails and then those extra little bits that some people will use, some people won't and most importantly for many of us traditional lists who've been on YouTube for a long time, it's now kind of pushing tags into secondary importance. It's not on that main first upload page, it's on the second one. Do you need them? We've got more videos about that, uh, so stay tuned for them. There were a couple of teething problems. The description box wasn't big enough for me to type in. I couldn't immediately find the playlist I wanted to, but other than that, for a beta, it worked almost flawlessly. Cards and end screens do still need to be properly integrated into the system, and we didn't show you any of your monetization process there so if you do have access to the beta upload screen and you are monetizing your content maybe let us know in the comments below how that's working out for you. Without a shadow of a doubt we'll have a lot more content on this screen as it becomes more available and is updated and when we add some vidIQ tools to it. Yep if you didn't already know it vidIQ helps you research YouTube, analyze any video on the platform, audit your own channels and take actionable steps that will help grow your channel and we will add new tools to the upload process in the near future. For more YouTube beginners guys just like this, check out the playlist over here. For more vidIQ tools, check out the video playlist down there. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your video making day. Who's looking forward to the new studio? Hmm.